Hello guys, long time no see, and I'm back because I recently stumbled upon this kind of image editing where we have some kind of geometric shape and then a displacement of the ordinary photo, often a landscape. Apparently this have totally skipped my attention because I first really starting noticing um, these uh, kind of edits right now. So I thought, let's talk about how it's done in Photoshop. Now you can say, um, here we are in Photoshop, it might be really easy just to create a shape, rotating it, done, um, almost. Uh, but I think there's more to it and we could do it in a most, much, much smarter way and let's talk about that. Because in order to succeed in these kind of image edits, you'll have to be able to resize the shape here. In this case, I think it's called trapez uh, or a circle or a rectangle. You'll have to be able to resize that. You'll have to be able to move around the content in the shape. Uh, so if you want to, this have to this more. Uh, sorry, if you'll have if you want to have this mountain in this side instead, you have to be able to do that. So we'll have to set it up in a little smart, in a much smarter way so we can have a non-destructive workflow and be able to move around the image back and forth. So here we are in Photoshop with, in my case, I want to use this background with the mountain and all the clouds as the landscape. So open up your image, which you want to edit and of course, add some filters, add some whatever you like, and save that as a PSD file. Now what we're going to do is creating a separate PSD file, Photoshop document, for the shape and the, the constant inside the shape, or should I just say, for this effect. So I'll create a new document, but I'll just take the background, duplicate that layer, and set the destination to a new document because then here in the new documents we will have the exact same size so create a new layer control shift alt n and then delete the background image because you won't need the ordinary image now let's just save that psd file as some kind of connector slash shape file um, and then go ahead and place the ordinary this psd file in this psd file as a linked object now i'll just do that you do that on the file and then on a place links and choose the mountain psd file and as you can see it's in here if you don't know what a linked uh, embedded it, sorry a linked smart object is um let me just set in uh, embedded you can see here that these are different types of layers. So here we have an ordinary layer, a smart layer, or in this case, an embedded layer and a linked layer. So a linked layer will just, you can search about the rest, but let me just talk about uh, the links. The linked layer links to another file. So if I double click on that, it will open the file it's linking to. And if I'm editing this image, I want a bright sun right here, save that. It's going to update the link file because it looks at that file and shows that file. So let me just go back and undo that. And we're back here. I want you to place another link uh, PST file and that should be the mountain once again. So we will have two link file pointing to the same PST file. And the reason for that is, mm, let's not talk about that right now. Let's just first create a shape actually. Um, create a new layer and Go down here to your shapes. Now here you have to choose if you want to ellipse, a polygon, a rectangle, or some kind of custom shape tool. Uh, I mean some kind of custom shape you can choose now. For me, I'll choose a rectangle. Um, and you have to make sure that it's set on shape, not path, not pixel, but shape, because path is hard to move around with. Pixel is a destructive, uh, we'll, we will destruct them and have bend the pixel and it will look awful if we resize that so take shape and make sure that you have that you have no border on it and create a shape <clears throat> this is my shape i'll move it in the middle by pressing ctrl a then i go to the move tool 
and say aligned horizontally, align vertically. And now I will press Ctrl T on the same rectangle layer and open up the free transform. I could right click and choose what I want to do. I want to skew. I could also skew by holding down control and then go to these uh, in the middle here and then you can see you can start skewing it. Skewing it. I don't know how to say it actually. Or just one point I could do that. But I'll do it like that. I think that's a kind of interesting shape and align it again. Now here comes the trick. Take one of the linked objects moved above the shape and then create a a clicking mask, clipping mask. If you do not, don't know what that is, you need to uh, close the with this video now and search for a clipping mask. You can also get a clipping mask by holding your mouse between the layers and holding down Alt, and you will see this icon pops up. Click, and you will see this arrow. Now, what that means is, of course, you know this by now. Uh, it, the that this image can only exist exist on the whatever content is below. So in this ca case, it can only exist on this shape. So if we go now and pressing in the Control T, free transform and flip it horizontal, we will only flip it the image which is only exists on the rectangle. I can also flip it uh, vertically, and you'll see we kind of did the effects right now. But if we did it uh, the way I showed you in the start, um, we would be finished. Um, there was no going back. There was no resizing this layer and you can see it's not quite there yet is it i don't think it's finished yet because it needs some kind of extra editing and um, maybe i want to resize the shape up here now as you can see that's possible i can stretch it without losing quality and i have my whole image just popping out like that um, I can also resize the image really small, really big, and it doesn't lose quality. As you can see, I just stretched that. So now you have some time. Now you have set it up in a smart way, and you will have some redefining tools. Uh, sorry, refining design tools, as you can just move around and get it as you want. Um, now. That seemed a little bit messy, didn't it? Yes, it did. I agree on that. But if we want to come back and say, oh, I got the shape just right. I got the placement of the content in the shape just right. And now there's some kind of things I want to get rid of. Now I have to start all over because in my case, I think these trees doesn't do a good job on my image. So I want to remove them. I'll have to remove them down here and then up here. And that's just get really messy if we did it. In the normal way but um, because we've done it this way I can just go to the link file double click on the link layer and go ahead and fix that with the patch tool this would be a horrible but fast edit so bear with me here I'll just remove the trees hmm that didn't like look that good did it that's okay it's just an example so save that come back boom and it's done the trees gone here and the trees are gone up here and you can see by doing it this way you can also come back you can always come back and forth um, to create what you want but the last step to achieve this effect is that you have to align it in some ways uh, the best example is here you can see the circle would actually overlap the mountain here so you'll have to render out the mountain and then make a layer mask to uh, hide the, the circle. Let's do that in a minute. Or fade it out. As you can see here, it's kind of fading out uh, from top to bottom. So the way you do that is creating a layer mask on the shape and start deleting some of the shape. Uh, you should also know that how to how layer mask works. Um, I'm not going to cover that in this tutorial, but if you don't know it, find out. So of course, get your uh, brush tool and start painting with black and with a fading black if you want it to fade. And you can see here that kind of looks, the, looks like the tree image or you just hide the path layer for a second 
go in, grab your whatever tool you want to render out with. I'm just going to get the magnetic lasso tool because I need to get it done quick. Oh shit, I made a mistake. I made multiple mistakes. Uh, I would really, really prefer the pen tool, but there's no time right now. Now I have a shape here, my pixels, and I will go in and fill that in with black so it removes. And you could see if it did a better job. I'm actually sad I didn't do a better job. Let's just say I got that 100% right. You could see that it's now hidden from the background, some kind of overlaps, just like our uh, circle here. So that's how you do that. I hope you found that useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And remember, if you have any questions about other Photoshop uh, effects, tricks, or help, comment in the comments and I will we will take a look at how it's done. Thank you. Bye.